Hi, I'm Analytical, the sickeningly entertaining and educational coding drag queen, and today we're going to be talking about January, a month dedicated to making generative art during January, of course. I've dabbled a little bit in making some generative art in a P5JS, which is a JavaScript creative programming language. We've got some videos on the channel. I'm doing some live streams with it. It is a great time to explore learning a new technique and explore creativity with code. Let's take a look at the website to see more information about it. January is back, 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 back again. It is an artificially generated month of time where we build code that makes beautiful things. There are prompts for each day. The first one, draw 10,000 of something. The third one, space. Fifth, destroy a square. There are so many cool ideas and they're all just really simple. You can kind of choose your own adventure and put your creative stamp on art and code while learning and improving your skills. And that is exactly what I'm doing. Let's pull up the Twitter so we can see all the cool things that people have done so far. So today, the prompt was no computer. Well, I my no computer genre of art was doing a beautiful face of makeup that generated an amazing drag queen. Does that count as generative art? I don't really know. Um, but there are so many great examples you can get inspired by. And even if you don't have an idea yourself of art, even recreating some of these things could give you an incredible idea on something to do. I've been really interested in this Fidenza. This guy, Tyler Hobbs, created this, an algorithm that kind of generates pieces like this. I think it is so gorgeous and so creative. He talks a lot about the challenge. It's all randomly generated based on parameters, but you have to have a great set of parameters so that if it's randomly generated, it's going to give you a piece that just looks just as beautiful as the others and is aligned to them. I don't know that much about NFTs. Let me tell you that. I don't know much about crypto. I don't know much about NFTs. So the NFT that what I know about it is like it's a unique token. But what's cool about NFTs and this art is that and the babies, I am not trying to pitch you NFTs. I'm just seeing some telling you something interesting I found out about NFTs that like made me want to learn more about them. Every time you purchase one of these pieces of art, so you do it on art blocks, it generates that NFT. I don't know if that's the right phrasing. It gives you an NFT that produces an image and that's the input to the algorithm. So each time you buy it, you don't know what you're gonna get and there's a limited supply of how many pieces can be printed. So for this Fidenza, there are a thousand pieces that can be printed, but some of these have gone for like a lot of money. And like, it's not that I wouldn't wanna make an NFT and sell it for like a million dollars. Like I would do that. Uh, if I had to, if I had to, I would make an NFT and sell it for a million dollars. All right, let's go to the P5JS website. I will create a new sketch and hit play. The generative art that I kinda wanna do, Christopher John Rogers, an incredible designer. I love that he uses so many colors in his works. And I really love this dress. I love all the different colors on it and the patterns. And I thought this could be a cool thing to create or use as my inspiration for using a rainbow checkerboard, using a, a the green and black checkerboard and using black and white stripe. I do not know what I will end up doing with this, but I feel like if I can just draw those out as patterns, I can start with that. I'm gonna start out with the rainbow grid. So let's just make this background white. I'm gonna make a variable for the scale of these squares. And I think it would be great to grab some of these colors and put them as variables so that I don't have to like think about that as much. We're drawing a rectangle. Let's just do zero, zero and make it scale, I guess. I wanna make that scale bigger than 50. Then the fill will be green. Moment of truth, we're running it just to see if the green is good. This is a good thing about to know about processing. Color is a processing specific function, so I cannot use it until I'm in setup. So I gotta move that into setup, which is fine. Okay, that's like the green I was looking for. I'm gonna make three functions here. Black and white stripes. I feel like I should set X, the Y, the width and the height. I'll do a function for the black and white grid. And then I will do a function for the rainbow grid. Once I have these functions done, maybe I can like repeat them in interesting ways. I can kind of put them all over. I guess, should these always be squares? Is that something we wanna think about? I don't, we, this is the thing with software engineering. It is very easy to think there are so many more problems that you wanna solve and there are, but it's about the priority. 
My priority is draw these colors on the screen. Let's start with that. We don't need to get too far ahead of ourselves. I'm gonna set, I'm gonna make an array with all these colors in it. I don't want any stroke, so I will add no stroke. Then for each color of the rainbow, I'm going to draw that color as a rectangle, draw a white rectangle, and then draw the next color. Rainbow dot for each color. Am I making a mistake by like putting it in a for each loop? To for each loop or to not for each loop? That is the question. I guess also I can just grab the index here and then that's good. The X, we're gonna move that over by scale times I and we'll fill it with the color. So let's just see what this gives us. We can make the scale bigger, but we've got our rainbow. This is the iconic CGR rainbow. So now we'll also need to add the white. And I have to move it over because otherwise we're gonna get too much offset. So the first ones are gonna be scale times I, but then I is gonna have to go up by two each time. I plus one, no, that's not it. Why do I keep doing math in these videos? Okay, I had a parentheses issue, but I also wrote it out. So the colors, these are going up by two every time. So we're gonna scale this by two. The white ones are also going up by two every time. So it's gonna be two times I, but then we're also off by one because we need to have space for it. Or hit and go. Why am I so good? And there's the start of the Christopher John Rogers iconic rainbow. I was trying to figure out why this didn't look quite right, and then I realized I can't alternate them because there are two rows of rainbows and they're different. So we're gonna have to make two rainbow variables and iterate over them differently. So now I just need to figure out which, actually, I guess it's probably easier to go through it the other way. Alternate each color and then everything will become even so I don't have to figure out which ones goes with which. Problem solving on the fly. Ta-da! <laughs> Stripes. I was like, oh, we'll put a loop inside of the rainbow, so we'll just draw each row. I just gotta flip everything over every other time, and then I think we should be good. If R is even, draw this. If R is odd, draw that. Yeah, let's use mod. We're getting closer. We are definitely getting closer. I just need to move the white ones over. I need to use mod again. Color one equals white, color two equals C, else the reverse. Okay, wait, I scale, I don't have to go up by two anymore. We're just gonna be scale times I. Mmm, this is, this is what I have to do. Color one, color two, save. Oh, bam, bam, oh. Okay. All right, so that was actually probably the hardest part of all of this. I had to think about all the colors, I had to think about the grid, but the other two things I'm gonna be doing are the black and white grid, so I just replace all the other colors with black and white, and there's probably a nice way to refactor it. We'll deal with that later, or never. And then there's stripes, which is honestly kind of a similar algorithm. Now it would be great to put this into its own function, that way we can give X, Y, and scale and have it kind of figure out the scale to work with. We're putting it into a rainbow grid. So now I am gonna need a few things. So first, one thing that's good to do about processing is push and pop. It'll keep any like transformations or colors or things that I do just in this function, I don't have to worry about them. Then I need to figure out what my scale is. This is gonna be exactly the same thing with divided by rainbow.length. And then for, for all of our x's, we'll need to add our like x offset. So instead of really plus x, let's come up with like a better variable name for this. Let's do start x. I'm gonna change the one variable that I've just added in so I don't have to change everything else. Start y. Here we'll do let y equals r times scale plus start y. Let's format that and now we are going to run this. Rainbow grid start x zero zero to width height. Now this should produce the same exact thing so that won't be necessarily too exciting. So let's run it. Okay, same exact thing, but now hear me out. Let's make this width divided by four, height divided by four, 100, 100. Okay. And now I can use the height. Rose is the height. Let rows equal height divided by the scale. So we can copy all of this, all this exactly actually for black and white grid. 
Color two is black. Color one is black. Then instead of rainbows for each, I'll probably just want to convert this to a for loop. So let i equal zero less than calls. Bam, that worked. And honestly, I know this is like not the best way to do stripes. I kind of just want to say, let's go into black and white stripes, make it the same code too. Instead of alternating the colors, I think we just don't do that. I think we just set, I think we just do that. Let's see. Am I a genius? We just solved all these problems using the exact same code. Let's maybe like pick random functions and draw them in random shapes or places on the screen. I'm gonna make an array of functions. I know this is weird, but this is kind of the magic of JavaScript. Black and white stripes, black and white grid, rainbow grid. Let's create a variable functions. I'm gonna pick a random seed just so we're not going to have a flickering because I want to be sent careful of anyone's eyes. Now I will pick random functions. This will be my function. Bam. Okay. Now we can do so much stuff with this. For let i equals zero, i is less than like 100. Random zero to 100. Random zero to width. Random zero to height. This is gonna draw me a hundred random of these shapes, or these rectangles all over the screen. I'm an artist, I'm a genius, I'm a legend. I've added some transformations to them and added, made the screen a lot bigger. Someone suggested this in the chat to weight the colored functions and the black and white one the same or differently. That way I would have an equal number of colors and black and whites because there were two black and white functions and only one color. So we fixed that by having two arrays, one of color functions, one of black and white functions. First we choose if we're using a color function or a black and white function and then we choose a random one from there. Yes, I know if there are color functions it's only one, but that's okay. Well, it would be cool to add the colored stripes, maybe an optimization you can do at home because the code will be included below. Then we pick a random degrees that we're gonna rotate around, get our X and Y. We translate our um, drawing to the middle and rotate there. That way we're just rotating in the center and not gonna like rotate around the origin in weird ways. And then we draw it. There are so many cool parameters you could play with in here. Here, I'm just throwing everything in randomly, but I could add more specific patterns or I could even do like different scales and stretch and squish. I'm honestly so proud of this. This is like something I think that is really interesting on the start of my generative art journey. I was able to pull in something that inspires me from the fashion space, from the world in which that I see drag and bring that into this coding aspect. I think this is like the epitome of analytical. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure if you like this video, if you like this art, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, all that stuff. I want you to go and make some generative art. As you saw, we were able to do a really cool thing, express ourselves with code, which is what I think coding can all be all about. It's like code is all around us, technology is all around us, and I want us to learn how we can represent ourselves in technology with our code. So I think that's a perfect way to wrap this video up. Thanks again. Bye!